Hello, welcome to module two, finding height. So with Great America, as we're going along, we know our idea um, and our main focus is looking at how energy is transferring while it's moving along the track. So in order to do this and looking at energy, we know that our total energy is always going to stay the same. And we know total energy equals our potential energy plus our kinetic energy. So key pieces here, we know total energy is the same throughout the entire system. And we also know that with the kinetic energy, we're talking about energy of motion. So we had to find our velocity. And that's what module one was all about. Well, now for module two, we're going to be looking at this potential energy piece. Potential energy involves energy due to position, position above d the datum or a zero point. And as a result of that, we're going to need to use this particular equation and use that, use that, that portion of the equation. Um, and in order to do that, we're going to need to find our height, our position. In other words, how tall or how high off the ground is our roller coaster? So to do that, we're going to go over and we're going to find a datum. We're going to pick a datum which is gonna be our ground. So remember, datum is just gonna be the zero meter mark or for us, the ground. And then our, our goal is to figure out how, how far off the ground is our roller coaster. So now the question is, how are we going to find that height? How are we gonna find that Y value? Well, we could send someone over the fence at Great America, scale the side of the roller coaster and climb up and see how high it actually is. But instead, we're going to develop some other strategies and tactics. And the way we're going to go and actually do this and to be able to figure out that elevation is through the use of a couple different strategies. First of all, there are um, different surveying techniques in which you can go and use angles to be able to determine elevation and height. So that's going to be one of our strategies. And, and specifically, we're going to be going through and using a strategy involving, involving angles of elevation, how high an angle is. Specifically, we're going to be using, and if you look at these little triangles here, we're going to be using right triangles. And when you think about right triangles and looking at triangles that are proportionate, we think about trig. So this is actually going to be a, a trigonometric a trigonometry um, and looking at those kinds of things as our way to be able to analyze this. So the key in this case are two different points, a couple different points. As we're getting triggy, we're going to get triggy by looking at our angles. And specifically, we're going to be looking at two angles. An angle of elevation, which we call phi 1, and angle of elevation 2, which we call phi, phi 2. So the idea in this case is that we are going to be taking those angles of elevation from two separate locations. And between those two locations, we're going to have a length between them of 10 meters. And with that, we're going to be able to develop an equation that will allow us to be able to figure out, ultimately, the height, or h value, of our roller coaster. We're going to be finding our roller coaster, our elevation up to the, the top of our roller coaster, by using our, a protractor. And on this protractor, you can see that there's a line of sight, a little a straw, and a little plumb bob, a little, a little nut, um, connected to a string that's going to be hanging down. So in order to find our angle of elevation, we're going to use our protractor to acquire that reading. Now when we look at that angle of elevation, um, and specifically when we look at our protractor reading, there are a couple things that are going on. First of all, when we talk about angle of elevation, we use the Greek letter phi. Phi, it's actually, I don't know if that's a, the best, let me write it again. We're using this idea of an eye with a circle around it. So, I with a circle, phi. That's what our angle of elevation is. But we're also looking at angles involving our protractor. So we use our protractor to figure it out. And what you'll see is, when you look at this little tiny angle, and if you look down over here on this side, you'll see that that tiny angle, so a small angle of elevation here, a small phi value, actually is providing us with a really, really big protractor reading. In fact, this one, if you look at it, is actually like 82 degrees. 
Really, we want this to be much, much tinier. So what we see is that when we're flat, when we have our angle of elevation of zero, we get a protractor reading of 90. And as our protractor reading gets larger, I'm sorry, as our angle of elevation gets larger, my protractor reading gets smaller. So what we've actually developed is a relationship between those variables. My angle of elevation is equal to 90 degrees minus my protractor reading. In other words, as I, my protractor reading is getting smaller in number, so as you're seeing that it's getting smaller in number, it actually means that you have a larger angle of elevation. So just for some clarity here, once again, the phi value represents the angle of elevation. And my protractor reading, which I use the Greek letter theta to represent, is actually my protractor value. So if we're going over and we're using our equation to find our angle of elevation, we're going to be using this equation to get that angle of elevation or phi value. So now we want to look at how we're going to calculate that value. So the idea is that we're going to be going and finding the height by creating those two right triangles that are proportional to each other. In other words, we're going to be looking at a reading, an angle reading, a phi reading, angle of elevation at one point, and then moving to get a second angle of elevation at another point. So we're going to be looking at two separate locations and having those locations be a total of 10 meters apart. In other words, we're going to be using an equation that will help us connect the two angle values, angle of elevation values, to that length. Now, a couple things to remember. We're going to be using this crazy trig function. This crazy trig function is going to really just be, really just plugging in sine values. And as we go through it, we're looking at the angle of elevation at point one and the angle of elevation at point two dividing it by the sign of the difference between those angles, and then multiplying it by the length of 10. A couple things to remember. We want to make sure that we're in degrees. And also, so make sure you're in degree mode on your calculator. And make sure that when, you come, when it comes to finding your angle of elevation, that you're taking 90 degrees minus your protractor reading. And now, what is this going to look like? How are we going to collect this data? We're defining the height of your roller coaster. We're going to do that using our protractor with a little hanging little plumb bob and a five meter string. And step one, go and find a location very far away from your roller coaster. And then use your protractor and from your eyeballs, we're going to go and get our first angle. So you're going to go to the protractor and figure out your first protractor reading. Our first protractor reading is 73 degrees. As you can tell in this case, you want to pick a location that's going to be relatively far away. So pretty far away from the object you want to find the height of. So our ultimate goal is to find the height of our flagpole, go a ways away, and then find an individual um, and use their, their protractor reading from that first location. So the first thing we want to do is write down our theta, theta 1, protractor reading number 1, 73 degrees. So once again, we use theta to represent our protractor reading. After you're done with that, don't move. If you are the person who's doing the protractor reading, stay there, stay put, because we need to make sure that you're staying in the same location and that you're moving back in a controlled fashion. Now the goal for part two in step two is to have a separation between your reading one and your reading two by moving 10 meters forward. So you want to move 10 meters forward. And in order to do that, you're going to use the, the string. The string is five meters long. And now what you want to do from the location where the person first did the first reading from the, from the protractor, we now 
now want to move 10 meters closer. So you're going to use a string and do two times five meters to get to your second meeting location. So the person where, at the location where they found the first projector meeting is going to hold the string. The other person is going to come over here. You're going to have a third person behind that's going to line up, and that's going to be you. Okay, this is oh, camera okay. There you go. This, you're going to be the liner-upper. You want to make sure that the whole set is all lined up with the top of your, of your roller coaster. As a result now, we want to get our second reading from this location, which is 10 meters away from the first. If you zoom in, you can see the second protractor reading is about 62 degrees. So then you're going to write down our theta 2 as being 62 degrees. So we're going to want to make sure we make note of that. Theta 2 equals 62 degrees. Now, just recapping this. So after you found your first reading and you have your first location, you're going to use this person behind you that we, I call the liner-upper, a person that's going to make sure that all of these individuals are all together in a straight line. That if you went and, and took a, um, a like one single look, one single shot straight through, you'd be uh, have them all in line, all together. So that person is going to make sure that when we have this reader, the, the person with the reading, who then uses the five, meter the five meter mark, so this is going to be five meters of string, and when they get that next person to be five meters away, that they're all in line. Then, as you saw in the video, this person that was at the reading number one is going to rotate around to the front. As a result, it's going to cause another five meters to be placed as far as distance from the first reading. Therefore, they're 10 meters apart. So the reading one and reading two will be 10 meters away, reading one being in the back, reading, reading two being 10 meters closer towards the flagpole or the roller coaster. All right, now we're going to start by looking at our equation here and see if we can use our data to go and find our h value. So using the h equation, what we see is that we're using trig functions, and there are a couple other pieces that I want to kind of point out here. First of all, if you look in this equation, you can see that these are going to be, these are five values, which are angle of elevation. So we're going to want to convert from our, our um, protractor reading values into our angle of elevation. In addition, you'll also notice that there is a, an L value here. L is standing for the length between our two data points. And for our purposes, L is always going to be 10 meters. In other words, two string lengths of five meters. And that's where our 10 comes from. The other thing I want to point out, too, is that we're looking at degrees. So we want to make sure that we're in degree mode as we're working through this. So our first step then, as we're going through that, is to go and find our angle of elevation so that we can use that for our equation. So in order to do that, we're going to want to go and use our angle of elevation equation, our phi value. Um, so once again, that's angle of elevation. And that's going to be equal to 90 degrees minus our theta, which is our protractor reading. So once again, this is going to be our protractor reading. And we're going to take 90 minus our protractor reading to get our phi value. So let's go through that and figure that out for phi 1. So location 1, reading 1, we get 90 degrees minus my 73 degrees. So I get 17 degrees for phi 1. For phi 2, for phi 2, um, I'm going to take my 90 degrees minus my second protractor reading of 62 degrees. And I get 28 degrees. Now, what you're seeing here is a couple things. First of all, you'll notice that because we're moving forward, my phi 2 value should be bigger than my phi 1. So as a result, when we're looking at, at using this equation, we should always have phi 2, our angle of elevation 2, should be greater than my angle of elevation 1. So that when we're using that, that equation in the denominator, that sine value, then we find the difference between those two angles, it should be a positive value. So now let's go and use that lovely equation and see what we can come up with here. So h is going to be equal to, and then parentheses will be important as we move along, so sine of phi 1, which we found to be 17 degrees, 
times the sine of our phi, our angle of elevation 2, which is 28 degrees. And then we're going to divide that by the sine. And now this is where parentheses are important for sure. We want to subtract those two angles. So 28 degrees minus my 17 degrees. And then we're going to multiply that whole quantity by my L, which we know is going to be 10 meters. And now, calculators out, calculators out. Pull them out, plug it in, pause, make sure you're getting the right answer. We want to make sure that you're in degree mode, that you're using the, these equations properly. So make sure to check this so that we know that you're all on the same page. Do, 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 do. Yep, you actually do need to plug it in. Okay, awesome. Now let's check our answers. I got my H value. I got my H value to be... Drum roll, 7.19 meters. So hopefully you got that same number, 7.19 meters by plugging it into that equation. Okay, so we now have used our equation to find H. So I want to bring our attention back up to our original diagram. When we found those angles of elevation and we were lined up with our line of sight, what we actually were doing is we were creating a triangle from the line of sight or your eyeball height up with, from, from that height up. In other words, when we're looking at actually calculating the height of our flagpole, we really are only looking at a situation from our eyeballs up to the top of the flag. So if we want to get the overall height, we need to add on the eyeball height, or in other words, the height from, of the person who is doing the, the, the readings, the data collection, from the, the ground up to their eyes. So in order to do this, we're going to want to use this equation. This big height equals h, which is that calculated h. So in other words, this is our elevation or our height here. Elevation, our overall height or overall elevation, is equal to the h we calculated plus the eyeball height. So for our purposes, when we went through, we went and we found out that Ms. Potter's eyeball height, and remember, we're doing this in meters. So Ms. Bo Ms. Potter's eyeball height is 1.5 meters. And we want to add that to the H value we got. So the overall elevation of my flagpole, according to our kind of rough data collection here, is going to be 7.19 meters plus... 1.5 meters from Ms. Potter's eyeballs. In other words, we get 8.69 meters. Now, remember, we were doing this really, really kind of a rough data collection. So now I want you to go out and actually do this collection more accurately with yourself and with, um, with two other people. And remember, when you do this, you're going to have a few roles. You're going to have a person who's doing the data collection with the protractor. And that person is going to have, um, you're going to have to measure their eyeball height. In addition, you're going to have a person who's going to help you with moving 10 meters forward. And you're going to have the liner upper behind. Together, you're going to get your two protractor reading values and then go and find your elevation. All right, now, just a summary for, just going to pull it all together. So when you're going through and you're doing your procedures here to find your, um, find your height, you're going to start by going and, and finding a location that's a ways away um, from the roller coaster, and you're going to go in and have a person find that protractor reading number one. Then, using your five meters of string, um, you're going to go and make sure you, you move 10 meters forward. And once you've moved 10 meters forward, you're going to get a second protractor reading. And once you have that second protractor reading, you're going to write down that theta 2 value also. Then you're going to go through and use your equation for your phi value, your angle of elevation, so 90 degrees minus our, angle, our protractor angle and protractor reading. Use that to go and apply it in and place it into your trig equation, that H equation, this one. And then once you're done with that, you're going to go and find the elevation by taking the H plus your eyeball height. So pause it, take a picture of this, make sure you use this, because now you're going to actually apply this. You're going to go and use worksheet 2A and go and find the height of the flagpole. Once you're done, you're going to submit that assignment, and then you're going to move on to 2B. 2B is the elevation calculation sheet. So once you're done with those two, you are done with module two. Congratulations. And you are able to submit those. And then after that, move on to module three. Yay.